Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, surprise, I'm in yet another new location. As I stated in a previous video, I will be moving around quite a bit these next few months and I have been the past couple months as well. So that's why my background is constantly changing and I'm pretty much always somewhere new because I'm just moving a lot. So bear with me through that. I know some people are bothered when it's changing a lot. So eventually I will be living somewhere stable, but for now I will be moving around a lot. So that is why things are pretty much always changing in these videos. Even for this video, this is not the final background I'm gonna have for this location. So just bear with me as I make all these adjustments to my background and my videos. And even beyond that, if there's new sounds or any rumbling or any weird things that happen during this video, I do apologize in advance because I am in a new location. And so you never know how things are gonna sound or turn out when you're recording. But either way, what's more important is today's case. So the case that we're going to be going over today is a case that definitely has not gotten even close to enough attention. This is a very recent case, but not a lot has happened within the past couple of weeks as far as I've seen. So I'm really hoping that by making this video, I can bring more attention and publicity to her case because I do genuinely think that her case will be solved. I just think that it needs that extra push from more people seeing her face and more people hearing her story. So if there's anything that you take away from this video, I just ask that you please share her information, whether it be by sharing this video or any of the articles that I have listed below. They also have a Facebook page where the family keeps very up to date with anything that happens in the case. So make sure you go ahead and check out that page if you want to follow her case and show your support. But before we get into today's video, I just wanted to go ahead and give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. As many of you may know by now, GlassesUSA.com is one of my favorite sponsors here on this channel, and that's because ever since I started using them, my life has gotten so much easier. If you're anything like me, you know how expensive glasses can be and how much of a hassle it is to get them from your eye doctor. I know that I've experienced exuberantly high prices when I get them at my eye doctor, and then you have the process of sitting there, waiting waiting in line and waiting till someone gets to you and it's just a hassle and it takes forever. However, it's now so much easier, quicker, and more affordable with GlassesUSA.com. By cutting out the middleman, GlassesUSA.com offers prescription eyeglasses for up to 70% off of retail prices. You can now shop for your prescription eyeglasses online without ever leaving your home, all at affordable prices. GlassesUSA.com offers over 4,000 styles of glasses and sunglasses, including in-home brands like Amelia E, which is the ones that I'm wearing right now, and then Adido, which is what these ones are, as well as what these ones are, and then Muse, which is what these ones are. They also have designer brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, Gucci, and so many more. You can find any style and color that you can imagine, as well as specialty glasses like kids glasses, sports glasses, safety glasses, and more. Also with GlassesUSA.com, you can add any prescription to almost any pair of frames, including sunglasses and blue light blocking glasses. Glasses, which is really nice to have if you're looking at screens all day like so many of us do. Or if you don't wear a prescription, you can also get blue light blocking glasses that don't even have a prescription in it just to protect you from that blue light that we're all constantly getting when we're looking at so many screens. They also have this really cool try on feature where you put a picture of yourself in to see how the glasses will actually look on you before you spend the money to buy them, which is really helpful if you're not exactly sure what style you like or how a pair of glasses will fit you. The best part, of course, is the price point. A complete pair of glasses starts at only $30, and free basic prescription lenses are included with every frame. It's so easy, all you do is enter your prescription, place your order, and that's it. You're done. Standard shipping is free on all orders, no matter how much you spend, and if for some reason you aren't completely happy with your order, they have a 14-day return policy for refund exchange or 100% store credit, no hassle, no questions asked. The exciting news is that by clicking the link in the description box below, my subscribers can get up to 65% off of their first pair of glasses, which is such an amazing deal considering they're already so cheap. And if you liked any of the glasses that I showed you or the ones that I'm wearing right now, 
all of those will be linked down below as well. So again, make sure you go ahead and click the link in my description box below to get up to 65% off of your first pair of glasses, 100% hassle-free. Thank you again so much to glassesusa.com for sponsoring today's video. And as always, I will be taking off these glasses for the rest of the video because I know the glare is really bothersome for a lot of you guys. But either way, with that, let's get into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the unsolved disappearance of Lauren Cho. Lauren Cho, whose friends called her Elle, was 30 years old when she went missing on June 28th, 2021. Elle was described as being a very talented soprano singer. She toured with choirs in Europe when she was a teenager before graduating from Hunterdon Central Regional High School in 2009. She then went on to attend Westminster Choir College in New Jersey to earn her degree in music education. Her talents didn't just lie with music, though. She also had a black belt in Taekwondo and was even teaching Taekwondo by the age of 12. And she was an incredible baker. Friends described her as one of those super talented, multifaceted people who just don't realize how talented they are. She was also described as having a great sense of humor, being very sweet, and having a wonderful heart. She also had a pet parakeet named Porkchop who she just adored and couldn't even be away from for one day. Her sister even called her a strangely intuitive gift giver and one of the coolest sisters that you could hope for. But with all of her seemingly endless talents, her sister described her biggest talent as being her role as an aunt. She says her love for her niece is unmatched and her niece is one of those people who she loves most in the world. She has lived in New Jersey for, I believe, all of her life and she was working as a high school music teacher in Irvington Township. However, it seemed like living in the same place for so long and working a 9 to 5 job just wasn't for her and she really wanted to seek new adventure. She wanted a different life. She wanted to move away from the East Coast and get a taste of freedom. She had really big plans for her life and was really excited to see what the future held. So she quit her job in the winter and set out on a cross-country trip with a man named Cody Oral. The two had previously dated but at the time the two were just friends. They started their trip in December with plans to end up in California. Cody had had already been living in a van, so Al joined him to embark on this new adventure. She also purchased an old school bus with plans of converting it into a food truck so that she could work in the food truck and stay in California for a while. So starting in New Jersey, the two made their way across the country starting in December, and they ended up in a very small, unincorporated town of 415 people called Bombay Beach in California. This area is known for attracting young artists, musicians, and basically anybody who's seeking out a more creative, free, and fulfilled life. So her and Cody ended up staying with some friends who lived in the area for a while, and they spent their time hosting dinner parties with Elle cooking for everybody and trying out different recipes to serve everybody, and everyone absolutely loved her cooking. They described how amazing her vegan basil ice cream recipe was, and everybody around her who's tried it said that she should be famous for this recipe. But by June of 2021, Elle and Cody were invited to live with some friends in Yucca Valley, about an hour and a half north of where they were living in Bombay Beach, to start working as a private chef at a friend's Airbnb. Elle was so excited for this new opportunity. Her dream was coming to fruition, and she was so, so ready to see what the future held. Now, like I said, Elle was working to convert an old school bus into a food truck. This was a long-term project, and she had been working on this for quite a while and was still working on it around the time that she went missing. So on Monday, June 28th, 2021, this is what she was spending her day doing. She was continuing to put everything together to build her dream food truck. Earlier in the day, she had texted a friend named RJ OK asking for some help with this project. However, I don't think that the friend was able to make it out to help her with it. Other than this, for the day, I believe she had just gone back to their residence where they were staying and hung around for a little bit with Cody and possibly some other friends. I'm not exactly sure, but I do know at some point she did end up back at the residence. But then by 5.13 p.m., the San Bernardino Sheriff's Office received a call from Cody Oral reporting Elle as a missing person from the residence that they were staying at at the 8600 block of Ben Mar Trail. Cody told police that at around 3 p.m. that day, 
he had walked over to their bus which was located near the property while she walked away after getting upset about something. Apparently she had walked away from the residence and walked up between some hills between Yucca Valley and Moranango Valley after getting upset about something like I said. But her reason for being upset is unknown. All we know is that she walked away most likely to clear her head and just take a step away from everything after getting upset. At the time, she was wearing a yellow t-shirt and jean shorts. And after this, she has never been seen or heard from ever again. After she had walked off, Cody started by looking around for her himself, but he quickly called over the group of friends to assist him in the search for her. All of her friends and Cody just dropped what they were doing for 24 hours straight, just driving up and down the hills searching for her. She didn't take her phone, her car, or food, or any water. They also noted right away that they couldn't find any foot tracks that belonged Belonged to her. The only foot tracks that they were able to find were Cody's that he had made after he was searching for her. Cody said that it was within a 10 minute period that she walked off and somehow evaporated, as he said. So some friends had noted that in the days before her disappearance, she did express some thoughts of wanting to harm herself. So that sort of put on an added pressure to try and find her even quicker. At first, they were just hoping that she walked off and just didn't realize that anybody was looking for her. Her friend RJ also told police that she was going to go out to meet someone that Sunday before she went missing, but she wouldn't tell anybody who. Apparently, she wanted to take her car to go and meet this person, but she couldn't find her keys anywhere. So they knew that she did have an intention of going somewhere that day, and they knew that she was dating around again. They said that at first, they didn't try to pry to figure out who she was meeting, but now they wished that they had asked more questions about where she was going. Cody also said that when she initially first left, he thought that maybe she was meeting someone who drove up in a vehicle but he wouldn't say who. So again, at first, they thought that maybe she was just going off with someone and just didn't know that people were searching for her. Either way, pretty quickly after her disappearance, I do believe that it was the same day that she went missing. Police used helicopters. They recruited the members of the search and rescue team to search the area. At first, they did label her disappearance as a voluntary missing person. But after continuously searching with absolutely nothing coming up, Cody and Elle's friends grew even more concerned that something was terribly wrong. He said that if she did go and walk off somewhere or even if she got into the car with someone, that she would have stayed on the trails. She wouldn't have just gone off and walked off into the wilderness and gone off the trails and gotten lost. He also said that he believes if she did go and walk off that by now they would have found some sign of her. They also emphasized just how excited she was for all of her future plans and her life ahead of her. Plus, like I said earlier, she had a pet parakeet, Porkchop, who she would never leave behind for more than a day. By that Wednesday, RJ had heard a vague lead from someone who said that they spotted her in Thousand Palms, so he went ahead and drove over there to search for her. But as far as I've seen, nothing came of that lead. Police also came out and said that they received a tip that she was seen with a man at a restaurant in Yucca Valley, but again, this has not been confirmed. By July 2nd, after after all of their search efforts came up with absolutely nothing, they reclassified her case as an endangered missing person. Since then, police have used light planes to scan the mountains near where she went missing, and they used cadaver dogs to search the property at the residence where she was staying. Police also questioned many more people in her life to find out more about her life. Apparently, it came out that shortly before her disappearance, her and Cody had gotten into a bit of a fight. Some said that maybe this fight was related to the fact that Elle was dating again, but Cody and her friends all emphasized that the two had a very amicable breakup without much jealousy, and Cody said that he was totally okay with her dating again. So police also went ahead and questioned several men who she had gone on dates with in the weeks leading up to her disappearance, but still, as far as I've seen, nothing really came of this either. But as with any case, there's not a lot of information that's been released to the public, so maybe they're following different leads in relation to the people that she was dating, and they just have haven't released it yet, I'm not 100% sure. Her family has also created a Facebook page that's consistently posting about her and any of the updates as they come out. They posted one update that said, quote, 
just a gentle reminder that Elle is an actual person who is fiercely loved by many, and we see the posts, comments, and speculations made about her situation, her family, her friends, her mental health. And one day, Elle's nibbling is bound to come across all of this because nothing on the internet truly goes away, referring to Elle's niece. So continue to be respectful, good people. Continue to remember her name and that she hasn't been found yet and that we need her home. Somebody knows something. They also came out and were publicly answering some of the questions that people had on her case, especially regarding how helpful police have been. The family stated, quote, the authorities have been exceptional from the get-go. They remain in regular contact with Elle's immediate family and keep us in the loop. Obviously, not everything that we are told can be shared publicly in the next breath, but this is how we know that things are happening. Sensitive and or private information is not readily provided to anyone who calls because that would just be unprofessional if not detrimental. They also said that they've been researching the possibility of hiring a private investigator. They said that they've done a ton of research and have spoken to many professionals in the field and that they do have a specific person in mind should they decide to take that route. Then on September 21st, the Sheriff's Office announced that investigators within the San Bernardino County Sheriff's specialized investigation divisions are assisting in the Morongo Basin Station in efforts to find Elle. Detectives from this division investigate a variety of major crimes, including homicides, suspicious deaths, in-custody deaths, officer-involved shootings, child abuse, and various other crimes against children. Personnel assigned to the division are highly skilled and experienced investigators who use the latest technology to investigate and solve crimes. So as of right now, it does appear that they are suspecting fall play in this case, but still, we can't really be sure the specifics. So, as far as theories go in this case, the family has said that they are reading a bunch of messages and theories that people have, but that they want to leave the investigative work up to the professionals, which is totally understandable. So, because of that, I won't get too far into the different theories in this case, but I do want to go ahead and consider the different possibilities of what may have happened because really one of the best ways to get her story out there is to go over the possible scenarios and figure out what may have happened. If we consider all of these different theories, it may give us an idea of where to start and where she may have ended up and where we should keep a lookout for her. So one theory is that she went off to take her own life. I think this was a pretty big theory initially but you would think that by now something related to her would have been found. I don't think she would have gotten too far on foot without anybody finding a single trace of her. So if this theory did come out to be true, I personally think that it would have been in a completely different location than where she initially went missing. So that brings me to another theory, which is maybe that she went hitchhiking and is still out there and just doesn't want to be found, or that something happened to her along the way, or that she ended up in a different location and took her own life. I definitely do think that this is a theory worth exploring. I personally think that whether she was hitchhiking or got picked up by someone, I don't think that she's in the location that she initially went missing. I will note that police have said that they've looked through her social medias and her phone, and so I assume that if she was in contact with anybody regarding picking her up or going somewhere, that police would have come out and said something about that. Or maybe she had a secret cell phone or another way to get into contact with somebody. I don't really know, but either way, I do think that it's possible that she got picked up by somebody in one way or another, and that she's either out there and doesn't want to be found, or that something happened to her along the way. Then the last theory is that somebody she knows, possibly Cody, did something to her. Now, I don't really wanna go too far into the theories regarding people that she knows, but I do think it will be a knee-jerk reaction for a lot of you guys watching this video to blame Cody. And I'm not saying that him being responsible is completely out of the realm of possibilities, but I do kind of want to explain how difficult this would have been if 
if he truly was responsible. Again, they were living with friends who were in very close proximity to the area at the time that she went missing. So if you go off the idea that Cody possibly did something to her, that means that it would have had to have been around 3 p.m. And let's say it took five to 10 minutes for him to do whatever he did to her. That is a very generously low time frame, but given the circumstances, I think it could be possible. And I'm just trying to think of a time frame that could fit into this theory. Then he would have had to go and hide her body and then clean up every little bit of evidence and make sure that nobody saw or heard absolutely anything. Then think about the fact that he would have had to have gotten all of this done within the time frame of about an hour because we know that police were called at 5 13 p.m which is about two hours after she was last seen but before they called police friends came out and helped search for her and i don't know the exact time frame of how long they were searching for her but i imagine it was at least 10 to 20 minutes at minimum before they called police again that is a very generously low amount of time but i do want to be fair when considering this theory. So at the very most, he would have had a time period of an hour and a half to make all of this happen before friends showed up. And again, that is if everything that I just said happened in a very short time frame and he covered up everything absolutely perfectly. Things like that I would think would take so much longer than that. But again, it is possible, I think, so I just wanted to go ahead and outline how everything could have happened if it did happen absolutely perfectly and, you know, given the circumstances, not perfectly, but you know what I'm saying. But this also kind of shows that it's very unlikely that all of this could have happened in such a short period of time. Either that or you can theorize that all of the friends know exactly what happened, whether they're involved or if only Cody's responsible and they just want to help him hide everything and that every single person has just kept their mouth shut this entire time and everybody's working together to keep this big secret. But personally, I don't think it's like that at all. The friends have absolutely absolutely no reason to hide something like this, especially if only one person was involved, what benefit do they get from covering all of this up for Cody? Everyone around Elle absolutely loved her. Her friends loved having her there. So I personally don't think that there's any reason that they would be involved. And so I don't think really any of this is very feasible. I don't think it's really possible that Cody was involved. And I don't think that the friends know what happened and are covering it up for him. And I don't think that the friends are involved either. So again, I know that a lot of people might just come to the conclusion that Cody Cody's responsible since he was the last person who saw her, but I do want you to consider all of the circumstances around it and just how difficult all of that would have been. He has been very cooperative with police as far as I've seen, and as far as I've seen, they have absolutely no reason to consider him as a suspect. So while I do want to keep my mind open and understand that we don't have all of the information, I don't want anybody going out there and making strong false accusations against anybody. I personally think that if somebody is involved with her disappearance, I think it maybe is one of the men that she was dating or meeting up with shortly before her disappearance. We don't have enough information again, so I don't really think that I can come up with what I think truly happened. I don't think I can come up with a theory of what I even think is most likely because we just don't know. This is a very frustrating and sad and heartbreaking case of a woman walking off and just never being seen again. So given that this is a very recent and ongoing case with not a lot of coverage, please be respectful in the comments. We're allowed to theorize and discuss all of the possible avenues, but please do not show any hate towards anybody involved in this case, no matter how strongly you feel about any particular person. Please no negative comments about Elle specifically, and please, before you comment, act as if the family and everybody involved is going to see every single word that you write. I don't know if they will read any of these comments. I don't even know if they're going to watch this video, but in case they do, please keep that in mind as you write your comments and put your theories and put anything out there. Lauren Cho is described as being a 30-year-old Korean-American woman standing at 5 feet 4 inches tall, weighing about 110 pounds. She was last seen wearing a yellow t-shirt and jean shorts near the Hoopa Road Benmar Trail just off of California State Route 62. 
If you have absolutely any information regarding Lauren's disappearance, please contact Detective Edward Hernandez or Sergeant Justin Giles at 909-387-3589, citing case number 092101115. Anonymous tips can also be submitted at wetip.com. Her sister posted, quote, information doesn't necessarily have to be about an L sighting, although that would be amazing. It can be anything that provides additional context whether it's about her journey to the West Coast, details about her business ventures, or recent conversations that made you go, hmm. Hello, editing Rachel here. I just wanted to come on and say that I saw another recent post from Elle's Facebook page. It basically describes the tattoos that she has, um, so I'm going to go ahead and point those out to you. So this is a picture of all of her tattoos. So she has a mushroom on her lower leg or ankle, a lamb on her shoulder. She has the no face on her inner arm above her elbow, the 10 commandments on her thigh and Medusa on her thigh as well. So again, if you think that you know absolutely anything about the case, no matter how big or small the information may seem, please contact the numbers that I just mentioned. All the information will be listed in the description box below. My heart goes out to Lauren's family and friends. I really hope that by making this video, we can get more publicity to her case and get more people on the lookout for her. But with that, that is where I'm going to end today's video. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put up new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead and click the link down in the description box below and head over to glassesusa.com for 65% off of your first pair of glasses. Make sure you go ahead and follow my Twitter and Instagram. I will be doing my best to keep as up-to-date as possible on Lauren's case and any other recent cases that I've covered over on my Twitter. If you have any case suggestions, please don't hesitate to send those suggestions over to rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!